Good to be here again. We had a good evening last night. How many of you slept afterwards? And how many of you were busy with Jesus? It was amazing. Let's pray together. Father, we stand in awe and amazement of how privileged we are to be able to host you to be consumed by your love and your glory, to be consumed by your faithfulness, your righteousness, your goodness, your holiness, your perfection. What an honor to call ourselves sons of God and to declare that Jesus is King. And thank you for the honor and the privilege that you have given us to represent you. I come this morning and I ask that you'll be seated in this place on the throne of first love, on the place of the King of Kings, and that you will never abdicate that position in this church and in our house, but that you would also take up that position in this nation. And I say thank you. Lord, I come and I welcome the seven spirits of God in this place this morning. The clouds of witnesses. Men in white linen. The angels. How blessed we are to gather you in the name of Jesus Christ. And to glorify you. Give us eyes to see. Ears to hear. Give us your heart. Come and renew us. Come and change us as we yield and we surrender into you. And we ask that you will do in us whatever you want to do so that you can form us as it is in heaven. So that we all get restored to where we were before we were in the mother's womb. And that realm of perfection. So that we could become true reflections of Jesus Christ. I ask this morning that you'll release your spirit of truth inside of all our hearts. So that we could get rid, destroy, reject everything in our lives that stands between you and us. We declare that we want to be temples of God because we want to host you. We want to be people, we want to be a place and a person, not only of visitation, but a place of habitation. And we say, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will teach us, you'll equip us, you'll mentor us to be able to host you. Pray this all in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, as David says, amazing times, amazing season, and I'm truly saying you, it's the best time ever to live. And I've said it so many times in encounters I had in heaven with Paul, there's a holy jealousy about him. If you speak to Paul, if you speak to King David, if you speak to Abram, if you speak to Elijah, all of them, they are jealous of us being appointed and living in this time and season. Because it's a season for the greater glory of God, and it's inside of you. And where we were singing this morning, at some stages, I thought, what's wrong with the people? Don't they realize they are sons of God? Don't you realize that you are seated in a place of victory you can't lose? 
Don't you realize that you have inherited all of the kingdom in heaven and earth and all of creation? It belongs to you and you've been appointed to be a ruler. So where's the joy of the Lord? Where are the smiles? Where are the excitement? It's time to take possession of heaven and bring it to earth. Jesus. Jesus. I'm going to share a few scriptures and then we're going to know because you need to know whom you are. You need to know what has been given to you to become a son of God. Because sons of God are rulers. They filled with glory. They filled with love. They taking possession. They are living and reflecting the king that gave them everything. In Colossians 1 verse 5, it's where, where Paul speaks and he says, and, and I'm reading it out of the Passion Translation. He says, And from the first time we heard about your conversion unto now, we faithfully prayed for you. And verse 5 he said, That you would access your destiny through all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realm. You can't enter into your purpose, your calling, your destiny, unless you have entered into the heavenly realm and have accessed all your treasures. Your treasures are in the storehouses of heaven, which have been allocated. Each and every person on earth has got storehouses of heaven. And that is why you need to meet Lady Wisdom. You need to encounter, you need to engage in her because she introduces you, she teaches you, she equips you, she is a mentor. How to access the storehouse of heaven. Melchizedek is the treasurer of the storehouses of heaven. Why? Because God wants you to access that storehouses to see what is made available to you that we can come back to a place where we are in awe and amazement of Jesus Christ. Amen. That the fear of the Lord fills the earth again. And if we haven't got fear of the Lord, the glory of God cannot be released because He can't trust us. In 1 Timothy 1, verse 11 says, and this is you. If he speaks to Paul, he speaks to you as well. I have been commissioned to preach the wonderful news of the glory of the exalted God. People, you can only preach what you've seen. You can only release in power and passion that what you've seen what you have encountered so if you and i need to preach the exalted overflowing exuberant glory of god we need to go and see what does it look like because it's time and season that the church in all of the world america south africa wherever needs to reveal the truth of jesus christ and due to a lack of intimacy Due to a lack of seeing and hearing, we're not revealing the true Jesus. Yes. And that's what I'm seeing in the church, especially in America. Unfortunately, I love America. Believe me, if the Lord had to give me a house, I would love it here in America. And I always told him in North Carolina as well. But there's such a lack of discernment in the body of Christ. Everything is good. Oh, don't worry, God will help him. It's good. God's grace is upon him. Don't worry. Let him just carry on. People, if we're not releasing truth in a person's life, you've got no love. You've got no love. Instead of, I'd rather keep quiet to keep the peace. No, you'd rather keep quiet so that the person could go to hell. No love. 
Truth is an act of love. Because then it shows that you are caring about a person. That you want him to encounter Jesus. That you desperately desire that the heart of the Father will manifest here in the sons of God on earth. And that's what is lacking because we are not engaging. We are not seeing. We are not in awe of Jesus anymore. And it's time that we realize whom and what we are. So this morning, I'm going to start and we're going to work a little bit through Ephesians 1. Verse 3 says, I'm doing it out of the Passion Translation. I love it. It is alive. Now let me give you the key of reading the Bible because I get so many emails across the world that says, the word is boring. I battle to read my Bible. If you're going to read it out of a soul dimension, you're going to battle. If you're going to read the Bible because you have to and not out of a position of love, you're going to battle. You read the Bible because you want to encounter Jesus. You read the Bible because you want to get to know His character, His glory, His greatness, so that you could reveal Him. You want to reveal your first love. So if you don't encounter the Word which is alive, how can you reveal Jesus? And as I said last night, Jesus is beginning and end. He's not a timeline. It's impossible to be beginning and end if it's a line. He's a perfect circle. And that is how you move becoming from beginning and end. Because if you see it in Christ, you become beginning and end as well. So what happens when you start reading the word, you need to engage it. You encounter it. God takes you. Lord, show me what happened there. You go into a vision. You go on that circle and it takes you back to time. You become a witness of what happened there. You step out of time into the now again. And you can preach it in power because you've been a witness. And that changes your whole view. That changes everything and how you are reading the Word of God. It's impossible to be boring then. It says everything, verse 3, everything heaven contained has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful Heavenly Father. Everything heaven contains has been lavishly given to you as a love gift. Lavishly means it's overwhelming. It is uncontrollable. Does that manifest in your life daily? If people look at you right now, do they see it? And if they don't see it in our lives, it actually means that we have not unwrapped. We have not received and acknowledged the gift in truth. We have not stepped into it. We have not encountered. We did not take possession. That's why in Hebrew 4, he says, come boldly to the throne of grace. My question to all of us this morning, how many times have you been in heaven in front of the throne of grace? What have you done with the invite from the King of Kings? But we pray, Lord, I want you to come down. No, the King of Kings invited us up. He died, He gave His life so that you and I could access heaven. As I normally say, have you at least RSVP'd them? We have not even acknowledged it. People, we've got no excuse. Let me be blunt to each and everybody sitting here today. Everybody has got it inside, has been lavishly equipped to enter into heaven daily. 
to be seated in heaven and earth as you are seated right now. Spirit man in heaven, body and on earth. To be able to see through the eyes of Jesus right now. To be able to say, there's his face, he's looking at us. It's about the positioning of your heart. That's where everything starts. It's a positioning of your heart, the alignment with the heart of the Father. It's about love. It's about first love. It's not that you need Him. It's I want Him. I love Him. I don't want to be separated from Him. He's faithful. He's truthful. He gave his life for me without me even asking. So what do you need? Everything's been lavishly given to you that's in heaven. It means you and I lack nothing. Amen. That should change your praise from being a beggar to thank you. Oh, please, Lord, give me breakthrough. Oh, please, Lord, give me finances. Oh, please, Lord, help my children. Oh, please, Lord, help this. Thank you, Lord, that everything is lavishly poured upon me. I'm in breakthrough. I'm seated in you. Your covenant says you will always provide. I lack nothing. Faith. I said last night, you will only trust and believe in a faith in somebody and something that you know. Because we are disobedient. To which church do you go? I go to the church where my friends go. I go to the church where the worship is good. I go to the church where the pastor's got a good sermon. But we're not going to where God says. Amen. We become church hoppers. And what happens? We worth zero for the kingdom. God does not know you because you're out of His will. That is what needs to. Where does the Lord tell you to be? world south africa as well but america as a nation has been called to lead the world especially on the prophetic to be a power nation i said it yesterday to a friend of mine if america had to think in the spirit as i think in the natural they would have blown the whole earth away they would have transformed the whole earth it's time for alignment to the voice of Jesus. It's time for truth. Are you now where the Lord told you to be? Because if you're going to be in a place where it feels good and that you are comfortable, you're at the wrong place. Telling you straight? Because God will put you in a place where you are stirred, where you feel uncomfortable, that you know, I need to get closer to Him. There's more of Him. I need to reach out to Him. I need to shout out to Him. Why we celebrate Him with all our hearts. 
How does Jesus look at you? He sees you wrapped into him and that means you get back into the church. Instead of looking at each other and the church to see what is wrong, we need to see each other firstly inside of Christ. Because a son of God always... And he looks around, where can I get Christ to be revealed? Because if we're going to start seeing people wrapped in Christ, we're going to unlock Christ in them. And the whole earth will be filled with glory. We start looking and seeing through the eyes of Jesus. I know people when I travel the world, the first thing that they ask me, where, where do you see the demons? What is wrong in this place? What, do you, what did you see? What demons are you? What principalities are you? And they know all the demons by name. So they're busy hosting them. And when you ask them, what angels do you see? What are their names? I can't tell you. So they draw them gates, a kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of heaven. Gosh. This is why we celebrate Him with all our hearts. Are you celebrating Jesus today? Are you truly? When you, wake, uh, when you woke up this morning, what were the first things that were... In your Jesus at work, celebrating Him every moment because He gave you eternal life. It depends on where you are seated. It will depend on your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding, your revelation of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus' birthday, Christmas, whatever you want to call it, is never celebrated on a day and 25th of December is a curse. Because never in the word as I celebrate my birthday when I was born because every day is a celebration of Jesus Christ and he closed us to his very he chose us to his very own listen here not a man not your boss not a church leader nobody chose you Jesus chose you he appointed in this time and season that we need to get to realize who we are, how privileged you are that the King of Kings has chosen you. And let me be straight. I've had many encounters in heavens and galaxies and everything. And that does not make me a pilot. And I've not made it yet. Believe me, because the more you see of Jesus, the more you realize you know nothing, you need to get closer. But we, are, but we are the only beings in all of creation that has been made in His image that He has appointed to rule representing Him. Do you realize how perfect you are that because there are over 3 trillion galaxies and we, probably the smallest beings, have been chosen? Don't you think that's a thing that's a cause of sin? Joining us to himself even before he laid the foundations of the universe. That's he said, I knew you before the foundations of the universe. I knew you before you were in the mother's womb. And when God says, I knew you, he says, I have got a relationship with you. That's why he's a time circle that you can go back and see. What did he impart in me when he created me? Amen. What did that relationship look like? Because when Adam and Eve sinned, it shut the doors of glory, the gates of glory. 
And God wants to come now and He wants to restore the Eden inside of us. He wants to restore us to that place where we've got a face-to-face -face relationship with Him. So we need to go and see what it was like so that we can pursue it now and step into the fullness of it. Is it possible? Yes, because you see it in Christ. Because of His grace. As a man is in his heart, so he is. What's in a man's heart? That is whom he is. And you've got to look in this morning. What does your heart look like? Is it unstained? Because those are ones of the keys for revival. Can I show you a little bit more? I hear the word revival at each and every church that we go. And everybody is pursuing revival. There will be no revival. Because we're not pursuing Jesus. Once the church... Once the people start pursuing Jesus, revival is a natural flow, effortless. Once he's restored as first love, it's effortless. So now we come and we want to, what do you call it? Resurrect Azusa. Why do you want to resurrect the old one skin? God's coming, working in new ways. We honor what Azusa did. You honor what the seed that was planted. Those were the foundations and those people did amazing work in participation with the Holy Spirit. You always acknowledge and honor that. That's the thing that needs to get back into the church. It's honoring the saints, honoring the people. But people, God wants to do something new, the unknown that will blow you away. In my opinion, so far in life, we haven't seen revivals. We've seen outpourings of the Spirit because it was stopped by man. When God flows in the fire of God, and nobody and nothing will stop it. For it was always in His perfect plan to adopt us as His delightful children. Through our union with Jesus, the anointed one. So you were adopted. You've been never have you been an orphan. Never. To be his delightful children. God, as we look at you now, you're delightful. We read that's why we need wisdom. It says in the word, and wisdom was there before the foundation. Delight to God. That's why we need wisdom so that wisdom can engage and then teach us how to be restored as a delight to God. 
Though we are union with Jesus Christ, the anointed one. What is it all about? Being united in Christ. Where do you see yourself right now as you are sitting there? Are you in Christ? Do you see it? Do you see the stature of yourself in the spirit? How big your spirit man is? Or do you see yourself in the natural? Because if you're going to look at yourself in your bodily form, earthly form, you'll never move in the greatness of God. Because you place God in your body and you are not hosted by Him. You're inside of Him. He hosts you. For the same love he has for his beloved one, Jesus has for us. There's no difference in love between you and Jesus from the Father. Hebrew 1, he told, he spoke to Jesus, he spoke to his son of God. He said, I have given you sole ownership of everything. If you are a son of God, it actually means I've given you soul ownership of everything. The same measure of love bestowed upon you. Love, what does love do? Conquers everything. Where is love seated? Inside of you and you inside of love. Perfect love. So what does it mean? You in victory all the time because perfect love can and will manifest through you. You love them to death, your, your enemies. Since we are now joined to Christ, we have been given the tre treasures of salvation by His blood. The total cancellation of all our sins, all because of cascading riches of His grace. Treasures of salvation. means you've been given an inheritance all of heaven all on earth all the riches of his glory unlimited never ending eternity isn't that a reason to celebrate The super abundant grace is already powerfully working in us and flooding into every part of our being, releasing within, within us all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. Grace is not what the church and the sons of God are portraying now. Because in the grace that we are revealing, everything is good, everything is fine. God looks at you, don't worry. He's died at the cross, just carry on. That's not grace. That's a lie. Amen. It's grace that we are saved. It's grace that we are loved by God. It's grace that we've been given everything. It's grace that we have a covenant. That we have the blood of Jesus. That we have the power and the provision of his names. But it doesn't give us a right to go and sin. Because that's not love. Grace needs to be received. And by stepping into the shoes of Jesus, revealing Christ, it's acknowledging, receiving and honoring Jesus. It's grace that we've got a choice. And through the revelation of the anointed one, he unveiled secret desires to us, his hidden mysteries of his long range plan which he was delighted to implement from the beginning of time. 
So through the revelation of the anointed one. Revelation means it's something that was hidden that has been revealed, exposed, shown to you. Have you seen the anointed one? Because it says in the word, nothing will be hidden to the sons of God. Nothing will be hidden. He unveiled his secret desires to us. And listen how amazing, how graceful God is. He said, I have to, John 14, I have to go to heaven now. So that you could receive the Holy Spirit. A companion. A comforter. Why? So that he can reveal the hidden desires of the Father. Why? He says the Holy Spirit searches the heart of the people. And the heart of the Father. So he looks at your intentions, your agendas. Is it truly about God? And if it is, he goes to the Father. Lord, what is your desire for David? And he comes and he tells David. So what does David, if God is his first love? He releases his desires in prayer. Declare, release, it's done. Thank you. But you need the revelation of him. People, that's a lack in the body of Christ. Because we've been taught you can't see Jesus. You're going to die because of one scripture. Where the Lord spoke to Moses and said, put your hand in front of you. I'm coming down because otherwise you will die for, because of my glory. But we'd miss all the other scriptures. Probably 70, 80 other scriptures where people have seen God manifesting, appearing and none has died. I'm still alive. I've seen in my life, and there again I want to put it clearly. I have not made it on a man just as all of you. But on 11 occasions now, God came and stepped into my room in the natural. And I've not died because he'll reveal himself in a measure that you will be able to control it. If God had to appear and release His fullness upon us right now, all of us would be ashes. We'll be fried. But we need to get there. We need to become holy. We need to become pure. Pure hearts. It says, Matthew, the pure of heart will see, Matthew 5, 8. The pure of heart will see the face of God. And Psalm... 24, those with clean hands and pure hearts will see the face of God. So everything has got to do with the heart. What does your heart look like? What is the truth of your heart? The hidden mystery of his long-range plan which he was delighted to implement from the very beginning of time. The hidden mystery of his long-range plan. Now, if I had to come and stand in front of each and every one of you this morning and ask, what is God's long-range plan with you? What did he tell you? What's your answer? Because you can never step into your long-range plan if you did not have a vision, a dream, an encounter, if you have not seen your scroll. But to get to your long-range plans, you need to know your daily plan. What did the Lord tell you this morning is your assignment. What are you supposed to release to give to do in this day? What do you need to change, restore, realign to heaven to so that the glory of God can be revealed? Otherwise, you're going to walk around, you're going to have no purpose. You're going to be like a leaf being blown around in the air. 
People, those things are important. I'm giving you keys this morning. And it might stir a few of you good. Good thing. Because I hope it encourages you to really start being serious about Jesus and truly pursue Him. Can I be blunt again? I don't think any of us in this place this morning, and I'm include myself first, are truly pursuing Him in the measure that we should because we don't really know who He is. The Satan has once told me, he said, if you people knew your God, the whole earth will be saved within 24 hours. I believe it. So we need to get, you need to ask the Lord every morning, what is your plans for me this day? What do I need to do? So that you can become a leader, a son of God, a person of influence. And the detailed plan will reign supreme over every period of time until the fulfillment of all the ages finally reaches its climax when God makes all things new in all of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ. What's the main thing about this plan? It rules forever. How do you want to step into rulership, into victory? You need to know your purpose and plan. Because that gives you authority. Gives you a mandate, gives you power, because everything in heaven is about sound vibration frequency. That is how the devil knows what your level of intimacy is because of the sound vibration frequency that you are releasing. And I can keep you busy with sound frequency and vibration for long times. I can stir your spirits big. Because it's all to do with the Hebrew letters as well. You want me to touch it quickly? Small thing, just stir you a little bit. In all of your DNA, there's an encoding in your DNA regarding the Hebrew letters. There are 22 letters. Each and every person, according to your calling, your purpose, your destiny, has got encounter, have to encounter some of the Hebrew letters that releases a sound, a vibration, and a frequency. So you might have one, two, three letters inside of you that releases that sound. And when you engage them, it activates you. And a true son then, when you step in the fullness and perfection of sonship, it actually means that you've encountered the full 22 letters of God. What happens? You step into sonship, which means you've been restored in the order of Melchizedek, a son, a priest, and a king. I don't want to go in further. Some of you will walk out. <laughs> People, these are revelations you get in heaven because Hebrew letters, let me stir further. Hebrew letters are beings. On the sea of glass and crystal where Satan was the worship leader, they once were, there are these huge crystals, whatever you want to call it, they are the creation of sound. And they walk between those crystals. Vibrating, sounding all the time, and they're releasing it into you. We can keep busy for days. Let's carry on. This is why God selected and ordained us to be His own inheritance through our union with Christ. Before we were even born, He gave us our destiny that we would fulfill the plan of God who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in His heart. To His own inheritance. Hebrew 9 speaks, said, they are testament. Somebody has got to die before a testament is activated. Jesus has died. Amen. Your testament is activated. What have you done with the inheritance? Is it in your hands or is it with the devil? Who rules over your life? Who rules over your treasures? Who rules over your kingdom? Who's calling the shots? If we ruled, 
shouldn't even have been necessary for me to preach because we would have celebrated. That's why we need to get people. We need to realize whom we are, what has been given to us. Most of all, we need to realize and encounter Jesus. We need to get back to him. He needs to be restored as first love. This church has been chosen to lead the way here. The devil's trying to steal, he's trying to stir. But God's looking for faithful sons. He's looking for people whose eyes are totally on Jesus. It's not a show, it's a revelation of Jesus Christ through the sons of God. And you know all the prophetic words. I'm just the nameless and faceless, but you know the words that Bob Jones and many other greats have released. Those were the words of God. And I believe it's a time and a season now that God's coming to restore. And He's going to add in this place. And it's not only going to be a dimension of God, it's going to be the package. Sonship is not only about evangelism. It's not only about prophetic. It's not only about worship. It's not only about pastoral or whatever. A son of God is the full package and revelation of Jesus. Verse 18 says, I pray that the light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination, flooding you with light until you experience the full revelation of our great hope of glory. The light of God will illuminate the eyes of your imagination. Means impart, activate, switch it on. Make it stand out, set it apart. And I shared with you last night, I said, when you are seated in Christ, you've got a sanctified imagination. It's impossible for the devil to enter into Christ and to give you other imagination. And when the Holy Spirit breathes in you, he illuminates it. It means that everything of your scroll, of the Ten Commandments, of the covenant of God is illuminated inside of your DNA, inside of the tablets of your heart, and the devil sees it. This person is walking with God. I'm wasting my time there. That's where we need to get, that the devil stops attacking because you're a son of God, you can't lose. And when we keep on sinning and stepping in things, the same thing over and over again, the same patterns in our lives, we must know that there are some principalities operating in our gates. Amen. That's another teaching. But we need to cleanse our gates. We need to restore our gates with the presence of Jesus. Because the dates, gates of glory came down when Adam and Eve sinned. You've been created as a city, as a tabernacle. You've got gates. So you need to restore those gates into glory. So that everything in you is illuminated. We know this is a reason he called you to himself. And I pray that you explore and experience yourselves all the riches of his wealth that has been freely given to all his holy ones. For you are his true inheritance. But there's a key here that you explore and experience it for yourselves. You need to encounter it. 
Don't let somebody other, some other people's encounters become yours. Don't walk on other people's revelation. Wear your own. As I travel the world, I hear so many amazing testimonies of people that tell me about other people's encounters. Nothing of their own. So what do they actually expose themselves? They've got no relationship with God. What are your own? The treasures and things of heaven come through your own encounters. You need to seek it. Not a book, not a teaching, not a conference. You need to access heaven. You need to access the face of Jesus. You need to restore him and becoming your rabbi, your teacher, your rabuni. That's why heaven is open. None of us has got an excuse. Everything was given to you. My prayer for you is that every moment you will experience the measureless power of God made available to you through faith. Measureless, unlimited, extravagant, glorious power of God's been made available to you can go home. We need nothing more. What more do you want? You've been positioned. You've been given. You've been grounded. You've got a covenant. You've got everything inside of you. You inside of it. Where's Jesus? Through faith. Faith is obedient. Faith also means being obedient to instruction of God. It's not looking in the natural. It's looking in the spirit. Because if you're going to look in the natural, you're not going to be faithful. And then you're disallowing God because he wants to come. And he wants to reveal himself as the God of the impossible. When you are faithful, he'll manifest as your impossible God. Verse 22, and he alone is the leader and the source of everything needed in the church. Don't just look at this church. You the church as well. Is he alone the source of everything needed in you? God has put everything beneath the authority of Jesus Christ and has given him the highest rank above all others. And now we, his church, are, the whole, are his body on the earth and the completion of him that fills all things with his presence flowing through us. Why do we need to engage Jesus Christ to pursue him, to get to know him? Because we need to reveal the completion of him. When Jesus walked the earth, everything was changed. Things happened. People got healed, delivered, set free, baptized, whatever happened. Are we doing that? So we need to engage Jesus. We need to have him restored in our lives so that we can reveal the truth of Jesus Christ. We're in the season of the revelation of Jesus Christ. 5778, seven, the, the year of the door. You need to be seated in the door to become the door so that you become a door for all the unsaved to step into the glory. It's an amazing season. It's the best season of your life. It's a season of celebration. A season of truth. Of not being lukewarm anymore. But to be on fire. You are a burning stone. You become one of those burning stones in front of the throne on the sea of glass and crystal. A building block for the new Jerusalem.